Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning. I'm not sure where you're at or what time of the day it is. Hello, and welcome to this quick conversation on using Desmos to calculate some statistical values. The first thing I want to discuss with you is a normal distribution. So if I'm looking at, let's say, this particular problem here at the top of the page, suppose we were asked to find the cumulative area to the left of a z-score of 1.29. Keep in mind when we're doing the standard normal distribution, we would typically learn how to look up the area to the left using a standard normal table. And obviously in this tutorial, I want to show how to do this in Desmos. So when we're doing standard normal data, our mean is always zero, our standard deviation is one. If I bring up my Desmos calculator, I'm going to click the keyboard button and notice under the functions key, we have a couple different types of functions. I want a distribution. So I'm doing a normal distribution and the two inputs that it wants is the mean and the standard deviation and it defaults to zero and one. I'm going to go ahead and type them in. And then what I would like to do is find the area to the left of 1.29. So since I'm going to the left of 1.29, right, visually I'm like going from 1.29 all the way down to negative infinity. So I always do chronological negative infinity up to 1.29 on my calculator. So the default is negative infinity. I'm going to go up to 1.29. You can see it gives me a nice shaded graph and tells me the area to the left of 1.29, which is what we got from the table. Now, if I wanted to find the area to the right, if we're using a table, we find 0.9015, and then we do 1 minus that to get the area to the right. We would get 0.0985. What I can do in Desmos is I can use 1.29 as my left bound, and I can go all the way out to infinity. So I could do 1.29. And then I can just start to type the word infinity and you'll see it'll convert to that symbol and there is that cumulative value. Now if I have a question asking me for the area between two values, right? again if I'm doing this by hand, I'm looking up 1.29 in the table, finding out the area all the way to the left, and then I'm looking up this z-score in the table, and I'm subtracting those two values. So in Desmos, obviously my lower bound is going to be negative 0.7, my upper bound is going to be 1.29. So I would have negative 0.7, based on that problem that I had written down, and then 1.29. So from negative 0.7 to a z-score of 1.29, that is the area under the curve. Now usually when we're doing problems involving standard normal curves, we are looking at applications. Ultimately, right, we're applying this to some scenario. So usually we have some data set, whether it's a population or a sample, and we know the mean and standard deviation of that data set. So here's a mean and standard deviation of that data set. Now again, if I'm doing this work by hand, looking in the standard normal table, I would have to calculate the z-score, excuse me, this question saying, what's the probability that I'm less than $70? So I'd have to calculate the z-score of 70 and then look this up in my table. The advantage to Desmos is I can just type in my mean of 100, my standard deviation of 12. So let's take a look at that in Desmos real quick. So I'd have my mean of 100, my standard deviation of 12. So instead of converting to z-scores, I'm going to look at the raw data value of 70. So I'm going from 70 all the way down as far as I can go, right, like to negative infinity. So I'm going to have negative infinity, and I'm going all the way up to $70, and that will be the value, the area under the curve for that particular question. So we're seeing 0.0062, right? or if we multiply by 100, that's 0.62%, and that is what I got from the table. Now something else to point out to you here, notice we don't see the graph anymore, and that's because our mean is 100. 
So I'd have to, you know, scroll out here to 100 to be able to see that graph better. Uh, typically, we just want the numerical value, so I won't bother to take the time to do that, but you could definitely grab, scroll that graph. Now, for this problem, it's the same data set. Mean was 100, standard deviation 12. So here's 100, here's 12. I'm finding the probability that it's more than $140. So again, by hand, I'm having to compute a z-score and then look in my standard normal table. With Desmos, I have my mean, my standard deviation, and what was my value again? More than 140. So I'm going from 140 out to infinity. And there is that probability or area under the curve. So the nice thing about the standard normal distribution here, right, is it really is a normal distribution where I can specify my mean and standard deviation. If I want it to be standard normal and use z-scores, the mean has to be 0 and the standard deviation has to be 1. Okay, and then the last conversation here about the normal distribution is I like to use this worksheet uh, in the classroom. So I'm just bringing this up for us to take a quick look at this. So one of the last things you typically would learn in a conversation about the normal distribution is doing what's called an inverse lookup. So all of the prior problems we discussed, we knew the z-score. We were looking for the area under the curve. So the last skill we would typically find or discuss would be we're now given the area under the curve, we're asking what is the z-score, right? So we're going to see the instructions here say find the z-score corresponds to the provided area under the curve. If I'm doing this by hand, I'm literally looking at my standard normal, normal table and I'm hunting for 0 0.2810 in my table. Desmos makes this so much easier. All right, now the problem that we're looking at is uh, these are z-scores, right? So my mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. So in Desmos, I've brought up my keyboard, and I'm clicking functions, and I have a normal distribution. And I'm typing 0, 1 as my mean and standard deviation. And then I'm going to put a period or a dot, a decimal point. I'm going to go back to functions, and I'm going to do what's called the inverse CDF. Now, what I'm going to type in here is the area to the left. So if I bring my graph back up, the area to the left is 0 0.2810. So I'm going to type 0 0.2810. Oops, I got to put that in the parentheses, 0 0.2810. And there is the z-score that corresponds to that area to the left. So negative 0.58 if I round to two decimal places. Again, another example, suppose this question says find the z-score that corresponds to 5% in the right tail. Now, Desmos is looking for what's in the left tail. So if I have 5% in the right tail, I'm going to do 1 minus that, and that's going to give me 95% to the left. So I'm going to do the exact same thing we just did, except I'm going to put 0.95 to the left of this z-score that we're looking for. So I'm going to do 0.95, and there is that z-score. And again, because I'm looking for z-scores, my mean is 0, standard deviation is 1, and this is the area to the left. And 1.645 if we round, and that's the value we're getting there. Now, one last example I want to look at here. Let's suppose we have a word problem or an application of this inverse lookup process. And typically, in a word problem, they're not going to just ask for the z-score. They're going to want to know, let's say, the raw data value within a particular data set. So, for example, Assume that the salaries of elementary school teachers in the U.S. is normally distributed with a mean of $28,000 and standard deviation of $3,000. So this question is saying, what is the cutoff salary for teachers in the bottom 10%? Now, if I'm doing this by hand, the first thing I would have to do is find the z-score that corresponds to 10% in the bottom tail. So I could, in Desmos, have my z-score mean 0 standard deviation is 1 and do 0.10 and there's the z-score of negative 1.28 that we're seeing in this you know pre-worked out solution now again if I'm doing this by hand I'm taking my z-score formula z equals my raw data value minus the mean over the standard deviation I know my z-score 
that has 10% to the left. So I plug that in, and then I do a little bit of algebra, and I solve for this x that's here. So in essence, the formula for x would be the z-score times the standard deviation plus the mean. And if I crunch that by hand, I'm getting 24,160 in that case. Now what I'm going to do in Desmos is instead of leaving the mean and standard deviation is 0 and 1, I'm going to type in the mean and standard deviation of my data set. So my mean is 28,000, my standard deviation is 3,000. So I'm going to do 28,000 and then I'm going to do 3 thousand and I want the 10% to the left and this is giving me 24,155 and that's what we're getting here rounded to the nearest ten dollars. So that is everything about a normal distribution and how you would calculate those values in Desmos. See you in the